I've worked for almost 20 years now as a pretty much most of all I do is this paint. Uh, but that means uh, I failed out of two art schools. I teach at three or four. <laughs> so there you go. Um, but the one thing that has managed to happen is uh, for the better part of the last 20 years, this is what I've, this has been the focus of my life. I, oddly enough, always knew that that's what I was and was going to do, so it was just a matter of continuing to do what I always... I mean, when I was seven, I knew I was going to be an artist or that I was an artist. I played in music bands, uh, I've written, done theatre, painting. Painting has been the focus because you kind of got to pick something and go with it, with everything, right? And I do other stuff as well, but I like painting. And it's a... I have control over what I do. As far as if I want to be red, it's red. Not, it's not like being in a band where if you want it fast, it has to be slow. It's just for the people that want it to be slow. I don't like compromise in my work. And that probably makes me... The artist, one of the, that's a very serious part about the kind of art I do. You know, I'm not going to compromise, uh, which is why I'm still dig digging ditches sometimes, uh, because this is a hard sell. I'd say the two, two main inspirations are, uh, one, the, the love of the human figure as an artist. I just love the human drawing, the, the figure, the form, portraiture, the nude. Um, I think that's based on the, um, the brief experience I did have in school. Uh, a life, my life drawing teacher, Daphne Dane, she's uh, in Canada now and she's a brilliant artist, brilliant artist. And now I do what she taught me. I teach the class that she taught me. Um, so she's a... Uh, been a major, major inspiration. And if you look around, I mean, half the work I do are nudes. As an artist or more philosopher, uh, the canvases allow me to uh, exercise my thoughts and particularly the study of the human condition. That's, that's what I do as a painter. I study and reflect upon the human condition. And I've been reading a lot about that lately. Uh, in different art circles and that. I, that's always, what I've always done. I've always thought about people and where they're at in relationship to their conscience, their mother, their brother, their boss, the world they live in. So it's man's relation to the environment that they're in. That's what I work at. Everybody has their own way of trying to challenge issues or deal with things. You know, I don't give money to Greenpeace. I give money to street kids. That's, again, so it ties in more with my interest as a person, the human condition. In living in, a, in the city, in the downtown core of a city all my life, it's just second nature to what I think about, as opposed to maybe I've been growing up, growing up on a mountainside, I'd think about landscape all the time, but I didn't, and I don't. Um, that's why I don't paint that. Being a bit of a depressive, uh, or a cynic on a good day. Um, the work tends to be dark, uh, heavy, I guess is, I think, a better word. It's, it's about intense. Intense things inspire me. Uh, difficult things inspire me because they need to be sorted out, figured out. The good things, don't have to question them as much. So I don't paint them as much. Paint, I don't paint about them as much. Um, love inspires me. Um, but again, with the, the, the other side of the coin, love is full of darkness and dread and fear. So even in portraying, you know, my greatest love, it's dark and ugly and hard and horrible. I mean, that's what love can give you.
It can give you the opposite too, euphoria, heaven, destiny. Um, maybe I just assume that in saying, this is love, you know? The unity is given, you know? The two, the two people are, are locked together into the one. So you don't have to question, is it good? It is. You know? That's what I like to say as an artist. That's what I think, that's what I explain. That's what I try to explain through my work. I, uh, I mean, I paint the skulls. That has nothing to do with the amount of grieving or death I've had in my life. It has to do more with the fact that uh, we're going through change constantly. We're, things are always changing in our life. Our life circumstances are constantly changing, and that is a death. Uh, you move, you get a new job, you die. Someone you love dies, someone you love is born. Uh, it's the ending of one thing and the beginning of another, and that's that's what portraying the skulls was. Um, I like to sometimes try to figure out the subject, and I do that by painting them because I stare at them, I get to know them, um, I get to shed my own opinion, or I get to help the world see that person in a way that they might not normally be seen, particularly the work of the street kids or uh, some of the underprivileged that I've uh, been involved with in my life. It's a uh, very similar, uh, the city I live in, in Canada, Ottawa, it's a small provincial city, town, much like Belfast. Uh, I find it to be you know, more of a small provincial town compared to Toronto or New York um, or Montreal or London. I know I will get a lot more attention as, an inter as a visiting artist in Belfast than the guy from Belfast who's doing an exhibition right now because I'm not a local. It's the same in Canada. If I did a show in, my, in Ottawa and you came over from Belfast to do a show, it would be a very, it would be a much bigger deal uh, a lot more attention because people think it must be important because it's not from here, you know? And that's one thing I've enjoyed in, in, in coming over here is to be able to get that, you know, excitement that you get when you go to see a show or meet an artist that's from another country. Uh, what I'm doing the next several, the next handful of years, and for the last few years, the focus of where I wanted to present my work has been outside of Canada. Um, I found Canada quite limiting, to a certain degree, uh, for my work. To s share my views as an artist to a wider audience, um, and not necessarily a wider audience in the sense of, you know, going from cable TV to MTV. I'm talking from showing 10 groups of people in Canada what I do to showing 10 groups of people in Europe what I do. So that's a whole group of people that never would have known what I thought if I didn't come here. I thought about it a lot before I came. I had a year knowing I was going to be in Belfast living for a while and I did a lot of reading about the city and the history and the culture. I still haven't really figured any of it out. <laughs> um, but I'm enjoying it. The one thing that I think is interesting in a, uh, is that it is a, a city that is very close to issues that I work with as a painter. I deal with conflict. I deal with man's or humans, humankind's relationship to their environment and in Belfast that's a big deal. Uh, like I said, I, I haven't figured it out, I don't know, but the tension uh, and the, the, the social conscience I guess that I feel, either side of the, the uh, politics here, it is a tension that I'm familiar with um, as an artist. So it keeps, it keeps me fresh. It's been keeping me, uh, I think it would have been a lot different if I'd gone to Paris for three months when I left North America. I'm totally different. 
and probably not in as beneficial a way as being here will be. I've gone to a lot of cities out of the blue and just lived and so I think I'm pretty adaptable. I think that's maybe a better reality, better answer. Um, I knew enough about Belfast to know that I would get along. I knew it wasn't a big, big city. I knew that it was, had, you know, history. Um, all I heard about Belfast growing up was about bullets flying around as a kid in the 70s and that's all we heard about. Now it's 2004 and I'm like, well, I don't think that's still going on, but I don't think things are, are better, but it's a city. I see old ladies walking down the street at night and I figure I can. The particular, uh, the reason I want to speak, chosen to speak about this painting is because it was uh, a painting that was done, although it's in the, uh, the exhibition here, it's central in the, the 10 years that I did this, this work. Uh, it was the last figurative painting per se. Um, and it was the last painting before I started the skull series. Technically, the way it's painted, I just love it. Uh, every time I, this painting goes away, it'll go into a show or it'll be in storage or I won't see it for a while and then we'll unroll it and hang it up and I just, I love it. I just, I want to touch it. I, I, it still looks, it still feels wet to me and, and that really, really, uh, I find, that's what I love about painting and that's what I think is a good painting when you just want to, you just want to like become one with it and, and for me, this painting does that. In the last uh, year or so, there's been a, a lot of movement with my work. It's, it's started to go all over the world and I've gotten a lot of uh, positive back. So it's only strengthening the fact that I, my belief is right. I'm an artist, I always knew I was, and I'm going to continue to do that.